lives in the East Riding of Yorkshire and this is my podcast about my handmade life. I'm on Instagram as Luli underscore and on Ravelry is Luli. I have an Etsy shop where I sell knitting bags and knitting needle cases and that's Shop Luli on Etsy and you can find links to all of my online places at luli.com. Welcome to my greenhouse. <laughs> I'm at the allotment today um, because we are in our first week of quarantine here in the UK and this is one of the places that I'm allowed to come. Um, I share my allotment with somebody else and unfortunately we can't come here at the same time right now. Um, well, we're avoiding coming here at the same time. We could keep a two metre distance but I think it's just safer for us to be here at different times and for us to catch up online. And I've been really looking forward to coming up here this week because I've seen so many people out in their gardens um, while they've been in quarantine and just doing things like that. And I have been wanting to get into my seed box. I love growing things from seeds so this is this is a favourite thing for me. And last year I discovered a new seed company and bought a selection of things from um, Pinard Plants. They do some really interesting varieties, some old-fashioned varieties and so I've been wanting to try these out. The light keeps changing in here so we may get some funny shadows and bright and dark things. Anyway, here in Yorkshire it can, uh, we can get frosts up until May and so I've just picked out five things that I think I'm going to germinate indoors at home and then bring them back to the greenhouse. So these things are likely to survive in the greenhouse if things get a little bit cool. Um, and so I've got some... I love the pictures on these packets. I think they're really, really cute. Let me just focus. So I've got some miniature pumpkins and... Oh, that one's backwards. Got a couple backwards here, I think. Some leeks and some broccoli. These ones will be ready to eat at Christmas time. So they have a little picture of Father Christmas watering his garden there. Um, a squash, which is called Blue Hubbard. So that's going to be quite interesting. And some cabbage. And some miniature pumpkins. So those sound really fun. just finished my work day and I thought it would be nice just to switch the camera on and have a little chat with you. So I've been out for my daily constitutional 
Um, yeah, just been working at my desk here. When we got sent home to work, my landlady really kindly sent uh, set me up with a with a chair and a desk so that I could just get on with things here. The last time I spoke to you was in the greenhouse. It was a little bit windy, so I hope the sound quality was okay on that bit of um, video. And I ran out of battery, so I have just to update you. Besides, that is my hold on this way. This is my dirty coffee cup, and just here are my. Here are my my seed. There's my seed tray with all those little plants in. So hopefully they will start sprouting over the next week or so. That would be really cool. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you very much to everybody who commented on the last video. Um, it was so nice to hear from you all and I had really missed that community. Well, I haven't been podcasting so thank you for all of your lovely comments. It was just brilliant to hear all of your voices. Um, yeah all of your voices there and I haven't yet gone through and responded to those so I haven't been through this but through them by the time I post this then just know that I really appreciated hearing from you and since I did podcast in my car so much has happened to all of us um, and everybody keeps starting emails off with in these difficult times and actually I suppose from my point of view I had found the last six months quite stressful and so I'm kind of finding lockdown to be like a calm oasis at the end of that. Yeah, so I suppose these difficult times might not be as difficult for some of us as they are for others. <laughs> Um, and everybody keeps telling me they hope I'm safe and well. And I am safe and well, um, but I would like to say if, if you're not, if you're feeling like you're having a wobble, if your household just feels like chaos right now, um, yeah, if everything is just very strange and surreal in your world, or you're not well and you're actually suffering through this, then I hope the podcast here is just a little calm respite for you. This weekend, I think, I'm not sure if I mentioned, well, since lockdown I've just been working on whatever project tickles my fancy and usually I pick up a project and stick with it but I think I've had a lot more knitting time than usual and so I've just been picking things up willy-nilly and one of the things that I wanted to do was to make some socks that would just coordinate with my boots and also with my new work wardrobe that I spoke to you about last year so they were just fit in with that a little better. Usually I just knit socks in whatever colour I fancy uh, so they can be quite bright and fun but with these ones I wanted to be a bit more coordinated and put together. <laughs> so I did send off to Loop of London. I looked at a few different sock yarns actually and I just really liked the colour options for Lang Yawol and this is a thinner sock yarn it is it reminds me a little of socks here but fluffier um, and it's a reason it comes in these 50 can uh, 50 can 50 gram sort of tube style balls and stuffed into the middle of the ball is a spool of reinforcement thread. 
that's focusing on me instead of the reinforcement thread. Oops, there you go. So it looks like that. Focus over here. Yeah. So tucked into the middle of each ball is this reinforcement thread for the heels and toes. So as I mentioned, uh, this does create a slightly thinner fabric than opal or regia. Uh, and actually, that's what I wanted, really. Um, because I want these to be able to go in my work shoes. They're not like an outdoor walking sock. And so I have been binge knitting these socks really and I have one already just there. Um, so this is my own pattern. This is almost ribbed socks. So they do have this kind of chalk stripe pattern. Um, but you get a rest row every other row. So and also I find the fact that it is a three by one rib means that it goes a bit quicker than like a one by one rib or a two by two rib. Yeah. Um, and so I thought that just makes quite a nice smart sock and I think that this um, ribbing gives the leg a little bit of structure so I find that helps it stay up a little bit. I have bought three colours in this yarn which are now all on the floor, so stand by. Um, so I've bought this teal colour and then this ochre colour and this burgundy colour. So I think I'm going to get two pairs of socks out of that lovely lot. So that's 150 grams of yarn and my socks, I'm a size 7, they usually weigh around 70 grams. These people that can get a pair of socks out of 50 grams of yarn just astound me. My feet are way too big for that sort of stuff. Um, and what I did was I used the ochre yarn with the teal reinforcement thread at the heel and at the toe because I thought that would be fun. But actually I think that makes them a little look, look a little like work socks, like, you know, sort of, I said they were work socks, not office work socks, more like walking socks or something that I would put in my tramping boots. Yeah, so I'm not sure how, how I feel about that, but I'm not going to change it, I'm just going to make them both matchy matchy and that's just how this pair is, because you're actually probably only going to see from from there up anyway in my shoes. I use these stitch markers to count rows so I just place them every 20 rows so that I can make them both the same. And like I say I'm just binge knitting these. I have started on sock number two and I'm going to carry on till I've finished. I've just taken my lunch break and I thought I would, I usually go for a walk after lunch um, and I thought I would just pop in and update you on my sock projects. I suppose this is the sock segment. Mind you, so was the last one. So, yeah. So, I have been working away on my socks that I spoke to you about last time using the Ling Yawal. And as I was going down the hill, I ran out of the to, uh, teal reinforcement thread. And so I thought I would just put in this burgundy reinforcement thread. But it's just not pleasing me. I do actually want these socks to match. I think there's just enough going on there that if I start putting in the burgundy reinforcement thread, I'm just not going to be as happy with them as uh, when they're finished. So I got the yarn from Loop of London and they have decided to close to keep their staff safe. And so I am, I had planned to get some more, however, yarn isn't really an essential thing to be ordering right now. So I thought I would just wait for it and when things start to open again, I'll be able to get that yarn then. I don't think it's going to matter too much if I get a different dye lot or something. 
So I've picked up another project. Down beside me here, off camera where you can't see, I have a basket of partially finished projects that I didn't put into storage. And there's quite a few socks in there. So, I've picked up a pair of socks that I was knitting for the hairy man. And as you can see, I've just about, well, I've turned the heel and I'm just about ready to pick up for the foot. So there's actually not too far, I'm not too far off finishing these socks. Mind you, they are size 11s, so, but you know, it's just a swathe of stocking stitch that I can do in front of the TV or um, with a movie. But I've already finished the first sock. I've even woven in all the ends. Um, and so it would just be nice to get these done and then I can pop them in the post. And I'm not sure if I've spoken about these on the podcast before or not, but the yarn, let me get my labels. So I've got this turquoise, uh, tealy, I don't know why I'm calling this colour turquoise today, this teal coloured yarn. And this is one of the Opal, oh, wrong label, do they call it Opal Uniball or something like that? It's their solid colour range. Does it say there, it just says 4 ply Opal. And the petrol colourway, which is 5187. So I'm using that for the heels and toes. And then I have had this um, Trekking XXL for quite a while. I had intended to make a pair of gloves with it. I actually bought it uh, at, I think it was Get Knitted in Bristol and Mum was over on one of her visits and we had been, we were on our way back from Wales uh, and we stopped in there and I had intended to make gloves with it. But anyway, this has been, um, this is what I'm using for this pair of socks. So yeah. I just wanted to say something about the mini skein swap as well. <coughs> Some of you have signed up for quarter two and I'm actually thinking, given that we're all shut in at the moment and that delivery companies that do delivery services are really stretched and they're having to deliver some things that are a little bit more important than <laughs> mini skeins, I guess depending on where your priorities lie, um, I'm thinking I might just postpone the closing date for that and make a decision about um, when that will close and we do post out at the end of April. Yeah, we'll see how things go. I think in some countries they're really trying to get people to limit um, the amount of deliveries that are going on and I think that just helps protect the health and safety of delivery people. So, so yeah, I'm probably just going to um, amend the date that I put in that thread and just to let you know that it's not off, it's just postponed. Welcome back to the greenhouse. Um, it's a week after I did the last section here, but I've realized I'm probably wearing the same jumper and the same hat, so it might look like the same day. Uh, but it's very much like spring up here today, and there are quite a few people here on their allotments, and of course we're all socially distancing. Um, but yeah, it is the weekend for strimming and drilling and doing all those sorts of jobs. So I may have to pause sometimes uh, while people, if there's a bit of no background noise going on, because there are quite a, a lot of people here today. Recording in your greenhouse is a little like recording in your car in that everybody can see you talking to your camera uh, Which is a little embarrassing because I'm also thinking they might be able to hear me talking to myself as well 
One of the things that I started doing last year and have been really enjoying is sending little notes to people and at the moment I'm not going out or drilling just when I think he's stopped he starts again I know who it is as well and, hmm. so yeah I had started to really enjoy sending little notes to people but of course I'm not going out and collecting little cards and note paper from galleries and local artists like I had been doing and so today I've got a really nice box from Katie Greenbean and I thought you might like to open it with me I picked up this parcel on the way out of the house so I'm really excited to have a look at the bits that I ordered. Nice little postcard. And a lovely note. Ooh. Very cute. And the stamps that I ordered. Oh, and the stamp pad. Blue face Lester. I don't want to tear the stickers. Welsh mule. And this is going to be My podcasting notebook. I like to plan out the podcast like a little speech. I just make sure that I've got a note of everything that I want to mention. And so I thought this was just a fun little notebook to use for that. In the house where I'm currently living we have the teeniest tiniest little garden and it really only is big enough to put the bins but my landlady loves to cook and so she wanted some herbs so I have um, dug some things up and planted some seeds and taken some rosemary cuttings just there so hopefully those will all spring forth in the next couple of months and she'll have a nice little herb garden I'm just sitting in the car having a little snack before I go home and I have been thinking about mid 1000 grams I popped over to the finished object thread, I think it was earlier this week. I'm losing track of time, are you doing that too? Yeah, I think it was earlier this week and I really enjoy seeing your smiling faces with your finished objects. Uh, that, that really lifted my spirits actually. 
Um, I am a bit bummed that I'm not going to meet my thousand gram goal this year. I usually meet it only just, but this year I'm just going to be way off. Um, I think I've only finished one thing from Stash. So there's that. And I keep wanting to extend the deadline so that I can finish. But I thought that I was going to, what I was going to do was to draw the winner on the way to Wonderwall Wales and then get them a nice prize from there. And I was feeling a bit glum that that wasn't going to happen either. But I've decided to do it anyway. I might not be going to Wonderful Wales, but I can still draw the winner and I'm going to buy something nice from one of the vendors that would have been there. Um, if they have an online store that's still open. So that's going to be good good fun. So if you do, if you have been participating in Knit 1000 Grams, then pop over to the thread and make, make sure that you've updated your post. It has been really fun to sit down and have a few quiet words with you over the course of the week and just and just check in. I really enjoy our conversation and the Luli community. Uh, and I've been thinking, I've been wondering if there's something we might like to do in the community while we're all in lockdown. Uh, if people have goals that they want to meet or... So if you have any ideas, then let me know. But it's been really nice to just stop for a few minutes every now and again and have a little chat with you. If you enjoyed the podcast, then you can... Oh, I've forgotten what to say at the end now, but that doesn't matter. It's been so nice to have you here. Come and join us in the Ravelry group, and I shall see you next time. Cheerio!